And just like that, we're firing back up. Going top of the order, second round, first pick. No tradesies here, so the guy who has Saquon Barkley... No tradesies like, backsies. ...is clearly on the clock here. Uh, Easton Assassins, and with the pick, it's I believe the floor is Big Coes. So he went Saquon at 1-1, as you said, Casey. Um, we didn't really get into the teams a whole lot through the first three quarters of the first round and, and why would you just take all those running backs exactly so we pretty much just took running backs you know early and often um but now that we're in the second round we'll get in here and look a little bit this team's got ezekiel elliott um joe mixon and now saquon barkley so pos- becoming a position of strength and i mean anytime you got ezekiel elliott on your team in a 12-man league you got a position of strength in the running back room but now you add joe mixon you have Joe Mixon and you had Saquon, so looking pretty solid. Yeah, like got a locked in two starters every week for sure, and then we'll see if Joe Mixon can. Joe Mixon one of your can become spots. Joe Mixon like like we want to right. out of that one one talent. If Joe Mixon can show it, and you could really really be solid. A dude's got you know the habitual uh, charge beater out of uh, Robbie Anderson. Robbie it's, Anderson is the Muhammad Ali of beating charges. He's <laughs> <laughs> bloodied those charges. In and out of charges like it's his job. He's dropping charges. But his job was... Nothing sticks to that guy. It's just Vaseline'd up. Yeah. Rubberine. Rub, I, rubber, rubber glue. I, for, 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 the speedster, for the speedster and big playmaker that he was last year, I was looking into him. I didn't realize. Dude, 6'3", uh, you know, 200-something pounds. Dude was playing. He balled out last year and Given the fact of his supporting cast and the you know Jets overperformed last year, the front office tried to you know tank it and it didn't happen. Robbie Anderson made a name for himself last year, and I don't believe it was a fluke. Josh Doxson's on his team. Got a couple other wide receivers here and there that are probably a little more notable as we get into De- De- Funches Jarvis and Landry. Jarvis Landry, Devin Funch has made it made a really good stride last year. Of course, we covered some of that target talk in the Carolina Panthers back in the uh, Christian McCaffrey podcast a couple weeks ago so not so sure exactly what we're going to get out of Funches on a week-to-week basis in that uh, draft bring in a first round wide receiver so obviously the team's position is strength is running back a little more questionable than yeah being so, the for sure ppr to, stud so you're going running he, back receiver or tight end and he's here. got hunter henry on the yeah. shelf I, of course yikes. this this kind of went down maybe before that dr- injury happened i think we had this tr- pick already put together before that injury maybe um, I'm not sure. It's been on close enough. Been a while. Wouldn't have changed anything. Um, wouldn't have taken Gasecki, but actually, maybe maybe I would. Now that I think about it, Hunter Henry out wouldn't be a terrible pick. So I bring he's, up the, the he's got ASJ and Steven Anderson, who could be a, a, good, it's a good good flyer. For Steven Anderson for the for the Texans there, and ASJ is a little crowded, but I don't I don't hate having to start ASJ most weeks if I have to. Well, real quick while we're on the ASJ, you said something the other day that when we were talking about the the Jacksonville wide receiver core. You are basically up. Mark Easley and ASJ is your two guys that are always going to be on the field. Yeah. Like, so just to take a shot there at AJ, a- ASJ. You don't know who the other guys are going to be on the field in the yeah. red zone. Austin Severian Jenkins, even in a crowded wide receiver area, run first offense. I feel like the Jaguars got a chance. Let's just restart this thing. <laughs> and we're on the clock at two one. And now that I've set this team up, I've, the reason I wanted to bring up those wide receivers and the lack thereof past Jarvis Landry, really, um, and Robbie Anderson, and Robbie Anderson, and Devin Funches. Doxson's got some good upside. Doxson's He's got, got the Redskins. Paul gauntlet. Richardson. Got Paul Redskins Richardson. Gauntlet. Let's give him a chance. I'm taking Kalen Balash. I don't, do you have the boo button? You don't want to hit the boo button? So oh, it's a bad pick. I don't it, have a boo button. but uh, Right. So this is probably going to be the most <laughs> unpopular pick of the draft. It definitely is in this room, and I'm ready to take the hate. Um, as I mentioned, the running back room in this on this dude's team with a position of strength. I'm going to throw a home run cut on top of those running backs he already has and give him a shot. At having a six foot three, two hundred and thirty pound man that can that can is big, he can move, he can catch. Gase likes him. Obviously he didn't like him enough to take him before the fourth round. Not a ton of draft capital. I'm not saying he's a ton of draft capital. Complete home run cut here. There's a couple of different things to get into on this pick. Obviously, we need to talk about the wide receivers that are on the board that I passed up. We need to talk about Gasecki that got passed up. And then we gotta talk about the running back, the other running back that got passed up and what went into this Kalen Balaj pick. Yeah, so basically the theory here is is with Big Co and most of us in the room for the most part, we're going running back over receiver and Big Co continues uh that kind of theory here. Now you did take uh, Calvin Ridley, but you kind of had to take 
the next tier of guys. Now well, we're in their second round. Quickly, I wouldn't take Kalen Balaj over Calvin Ridley, Cortland Sutton, Christian Kirk, or DJ Moore. Those that put those four, and I really and my boy James Washington is right up in there. But I'm taking the home run cut in Kalen Balaj. Keep All going. right, so. Why Balage over Hines? I think is the is is the first question, and then maybe we'll get to okay, a little so, bit of receiver so I, back and forth. I like that. Why you let's let's won. start on especially on this team. Receiver. Let's start on given given the fact that yes, I do. I lean heavy running back, and then when I'm not when I'm done leaning running back, I lean running back again. So let's we'll go. Kalen Balage versus Nine Hines, which is basically the last two running backs that you could look towards. Given sure. post NFL draft, John Kelly fallout. Naheem. Naheem. Naheem, I don't want to. I don't want to one star review for mispronunciations. Oh, well, I'm. I'm Naheem? Gonna call He's Heinz. Naheem. That last name's pretty easy. I'm Heinz. Gonna Heinz. Heinz. It is. So, <laughs> Heinz is. You know what? 198 pounds. Balaj is 230 pounds. I'm a sizest. I'm. My man's. You're he, a sizest when it's convenient for your mm, argument. Kalen Balaj was at the Senior Bowl, catching the best passes, running the best routes from a running back position. In practice. practice, getting love. At practice, that's fine. Now, and I, I'll give you this: Hines on the Colts roster probably has the quickest chance to play in time. My logic there Definitely. is: Hines, even though he could be on the field and playing, he might be a potential RB two candidate, and he might be a he. His upside is a really good RB two potentially, but the potential upside of Kalen Balaj is what I'm hammering on here because this team does have a strength at running back. I'm really gambling nothing but the 2-1 pick, which could be a couple of good, solid wide receivers, but I don't know. I I do like Anthony Miller. Obviously, Michael Gallup's going to walk into some big-time targets, and I love James Washington, what he does. But I took Kalen Balazs here. I took him over over Hines because I'm I'm not – I don't want to put this 2-1 draft stock on a guy who's got the potential to be a good RB2. I'm taking the stock – and it, and it's it's more likely I get that before you guys just cream me here and just run me over like a bus, I get it. Nah- Hines, Naheem Hines, Naheem Hines, however you want to say it, Hines, Naheem, has a better chance to become that good RB two than Balage maybe even has to see the field. Given that my boy Frank Gore's out there and he's a beast, and 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 we've all said I like Kenyon Drake just fine. I think he crushed it down the stretch, and he's I think he's going to get every opportunity to be a really good football player this year in the Adam Gates offense. So I get it. Hines is more likely to do well, but if it hits, if Balage hits, I think his I think his, he could jog he could trot the bases and be that home run guy. That's my that's where I'm at. That's why I took that pick. I'm okay yeah, well, sacrificing the, the potential. The only reason I see it as being okay on the, well, not the only reason, but one of the biggest reason I see of it being okay. For, and if you want to take the running back over the receivers, which we'll get to that point of this argument in a second, but you, you're insulated here. You get you get a reprieve if we were just talking about without talking about a roster here of saying you wanted to take Balage over Hines, but you get you got a, you got Zeke and you have Mixon uh, and Saquon, Saquon Barkley, so you don't need. RB two potential here. You you and you have Joe Mixon. Right. So you have you have three guys here who you don't need the protection of guys RB2, that you may need to be able to put starter. in your liner right away. So you're able to much more comfortably, in my opinion, take a swing on a running back if that's what you so choose to do, rather than going receiver because you don't like receiver. Right. Well said. I mean, so you want to get into the the receive? Like I don't personally, I don't think Balaj sees the field if Kenyon Drake unless Drake gets injured. And you know, and that is, not, and, and then don't conv- don't forget the inconvenient truth here, which is right, right. Frank Gore. But yeah. I mean, but if 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 uh, if Drake, Drake got, if Drake hurt, got yeah. hurt, there I mean, would obviously be plenty of Balage, and Balage can catch the ball, so there's no reason to think that he can't be out there on some third downs, getting some in-game experience and catching some balls out of the backfield and getting a handoff. He's not my favorite runner by any means, but he's got outstanding hands and he's big and he's pretty fast in a straight line he, he does have outstanding hands and i can't blame the dolphins for taking that solid stab of potential in the fourth round on 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 a guy that has those smooth hands but i just i really don't like him as a runner i mean he just he's so on top of like effort issues which i almost i like went back and listened to our kalen balage breakdown and i was trying to make excuses for his effort issues and like Oh, when he gets to the NFL, he won't have that. And you were like, if you don't have, if you got ish, effort issues, that's probably not getting fixed just like that, like overnight. Certainly not getting fixed with throwing money at you, right? Um, Frank Gore's not going to have any effort issues. He's definitely not beating out Frank Gore for playing time. Kenyon Drake 
is 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 also a good in the passing game. I really like him in the yeah. passing game. Yeah. He's yeah. lining I out could, wide, yeah. run and go routes. Um, so I mean, aside from a Kenyon Drake, you know, injury, I I don't. I'm with you. I don't, Casey. I don't see how he sees the field too too much. Um, I I I don't like him as a runner. Yeah, he's a huge dude, but he goes down easier than this Revelry beer I'm drinking. Yeah, he's just super soft. Like I read this Roto World blurb, and usually I dislike all the hate and shade that they throw, but they they just don't quoted. Like, don't give me your opinions. They quoted a, a scout who said that he looks like Tarzan but runs like Jane, mm-hmm. and I bugged out because mm-hmm. I was and I was also upset that I didn't think of that myself. But that was pretty clever. But that's the hits the nail on the head. Well, back when we were talking about pre-draft rookie running backs, I mean, Casey said, "In what world do you have a thunder lightning combo and right. the guy that's two hundred and thirty pounds not be the thunder?" Right, right. Like I get it, and and just everything you just said, Jay Wayne. I don't believe I again. I don't think that that Kalen Balaj steps in here week one and he's giving my team anything. And like Casey said, it makes it okay because of the draft. The logic I use because of the draft picks. I mean, the the running back room that this team already has. But take that away. I'm still going to make that same play for pretty much any team. And over Hans, because I'm not really shooting for an RB2 here, I'm shooting for a potential game, league win in RB1 if it hits. Take that to the wide receivers now. Well, hold up. I didn't even mention the fact that he has a spark score in the 30, only in the 38th percentile, and the college dominator is very poor. Yeah, well, I mean, there's plenty of non- <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't really care about any of that. But that I, did, I did enjoy how everybody got off of this dude's jock once he blew the combine. I mean, he still ran a 4.46, which is very impressive I, yeah, for I a dude blow, of his I don't, size. You don't blow the combine at 230 pounds going 4.4. Well, you, it's, if but, your, if your, your spark, spark score, score. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. For all the... Whatever that sparky stuff's talking yeah. about. I got I got a junior year here at... I four, could also care less. Just, he, he, yeah. he pounded 14, just, he pounded 14, joke, 14 he rushing hit. touchdowns in in his junior season. I know like one of those games was like six or he seven had eight touchdowns. against Texas Tech, right. so cut out all eight of those. Right. Well, right. Give, you can give him two. two. Okay, give him you two. two. We also don't count, we don't count Texas Tech games. Exactly. Still exactly. But he's still in the same season. Says so in the Married to the Game. Still... Still Handbook. went for still went for still got forty four catches that year, so that's oh yeah nobody's I think the pass catching ability is what you is what you're after here and what you like out of this guy and that's that's your home run cut upside there of it just, is of, of that of, now, of his yeah, and all the negativity that I'll throw at him like all that being said I I don't hate putting this guy on my team like I mean the hands alone um and and if you have Drake I could see you maybe reaching a little bit to get this dude but there's there's no way that I would take him over either of these two running wide receivers left or that tight end. You know, I just I there's no way I can do it regardless of what team it is, regardless of your well, mentality well, of running back over wide receiver. Let's, I, let's get into the why over why over the receivers. Then we we all like running backs more than we like receivers for the most part as a rookie in a, as a rookie draft goes on. But you're in a you're in a part of the draft here where you know it's all the you good got, ones you are got gone. Gallup, Anthony Miller, uh, Pettis. James Washington and Gasecki all left here. The team needed potentially a tight end. And I like how he tried to pump up these wide receivers and you're <laughs> reading them off. Oh, and could have used another shot on a receiver uh, on some receiver hitting here. So well, if, why why not Anthony Miller, Gallup, Washington, or well, Gusecki? I'm gonna, I want to I want to do this the right way, and I'm gonna say yeah, we're still talking about the two one pick, and it's gonna take a while here to break this down. But the thing about it is, is these are the not, these are the guys that's coming coming off the board here in a minute anyway. Right. So. The reason I didn't take it's Anthony... It's not going to take nearly as long to get through that. Exactly. So I, I Let's did, be real, though. It is running back over wide receiver for me in almost every situation. And again, I, I'm coming I'm off... I'm right of, there with you, and you I'm know, not that upset about the pick, really. I just want to hear all well, this, this is, out. This is it. Do you have a statement prepared? Let's go. Let's, let's go. <laughs> let's go. Hindsight is 2020, and I know this, this ain't going to work out for us until this year. But last year in this same position, in a 2-1 situation, I took um, Kamara over who would have been a Juju Smith Schuster wide receiver. And it obviously was a complete home run cut. I'm not saying that Kalen Balaj is Alvin Kamara by any means, nor did he get traded, nor did, you know, this, this team give up a two next year. And did he right. come in? And, is he playing with Drew and Brees? And it's just a different caliber of player, in my opinion. Right. I yeah. Loved Kamara and pre-draft again, way more than on Balazs the ever. Sure. Just saying. Uh, that, that same 110, 111, 112, 21, 22. Who knows what you're going to get? I'm just going to try for that home run cut running back. It's worked out for me in the past. And here I am again. I'm going for it. I just You brought now, up Kamara real quick. I want to just pat ourselves on the back because we were definitely way higher on Kamara than anybody else was pre-draft. We were preaching Kamara. So if you were listening to us last offseason, you got a little bit of an edge up there. Just want to do a little backpack in there. 
well, for 30 seconds, so back pre-draft, when we were talking about running backs a couple months ago, Casey's putting putting Carry On Johnson up there in his top five when everybody was hating on Carry On Johnson, and now everybody's loving on Carry On Johnson. Wasn't just uh, Casey. I had him in my top five, saying. too. <laughs> just saying. All right, so Anthony Miller. Love Anthony Miller. Love him more than I did before because and he's... It's much clear. It's clear on this team that it's the running backs aren't... And it's a strong suit of the team. So again, it does allow you to take a shot on a on a running back who isn't going to. But but it may be a smarter play to maybe try to take a shot on a receiver here. Why not? Okay, listen, dude. I wouldn't be upset if you took Anthony Miller here. I really wouldn't be upset if you're chasing the target potential of a Michael Gallup. I wouldn't be upset if you were like, hey, I'm gonna put you know Mike Gusecki on this team and just save and just put an asset on this team who's you know jumps out of the gym strong home run cut. right right I'm not upset about any of those plays I'm like just what I'm trying to stack talent on top of talent maybe st- t- maybe the running backs don't even need a running back anytime soon but if it hits now I got plenty of them. well That's we all, you you have to be aware of how fast running backs come and go exactly but with that being said obviously Saquon hasn't played it down but we're th- we're thinking that he's going to stay around. And Zeke Elliott's not going anywhere unless he pulls down somebody else's underwear. True, true, or, true. Or rolls up into a head shop or hits someone. So Anthony Miller goes to the Bears, and he's supposedly penciled into a WR2 spot here in their offense and maybe running in and out of the slot, moving all around. The wide receiver position is still codependent on the quarterback getting hit the ball where it needs to be obviously you got running backs that trying to catch passes and that needs to happen too but normally it's a lot closer that's to all the that Balazs is really going to be doing but i'll take check down city to Kalen Balazs if that's the way it breaks down you're not checking down to anthony miller all the time no. if he does turn out to be jarvis landry fantastic but what, what I'm running in the slot. You still asking a second year quarterback who only got to play half the season and albeit i thought he looked pretty poised but he's coming into a new offense, second year, not nothing close to being a veteran quarterback. Tons of new options on the field, tons of new options on the team. Bring in Burton and Allen Robinson, and I mean, just there's newness all over the Bears, and there's a lot of fun here. And we love the idea of Nagy, and we love. I like what the Bears got going on. But for me to say, I, it wouldn't surprise me at all if Anthony Miller. Would, you can be a really good looking young prospect as a wide receiver and not be anywhere near my starting lineup. And I'm sure Balaj might not be anywhere near my starting lineup for two years either. But it only takes two weeks to go through a couple of running backs. Ask the Buccaneers how that worked out two years ago. And not, you know, it just you could be week three in the NFL and be on your third running back. Normally, it doesn't happen like that for the wide receivers. And then when it does, you plug in veterans. You don't just mash out your wide receiver, you know, youngsters out yeah. there. Yeah. No, I so, mean, I completely I, I agree with Miller on the stance of that. I don't really trust Trubisky very much. No, nah. he's not my favorite young quarterback. I'm super I, excited. I, I haven't for seen a, a ton Trubisky. from him and I don't they didn't really take the chains off him and let him do it's what a, he needed to do. Last but it's year. a different offense now. Different yeah, yeah, team. Everything's different coach. 100 percent. I'm yeah. just saying like I, you didn't get a good. Right. Uh, I don't have a great feeling him. about Trubisky. I don't know much about so, him. I don't. It's mostly I, the punchable face. Well, yeah, it's the, yeah, the close eyes. But I, th- I mean, I think the offensive system, and I think what he they want to do, and what they're going to let him do, move around and throw it fast. I think I, I mean, he, like yeah, yeah I, he he was a very he was protected the ball at North Carolina. He pressed it down the field, and he didn't throw a lot of interceptions. That's hard to find. But I can I can I can kind of get on board a little bit with Anthony Miller and Trubisky, and you know that not the Bears' being offense so, not could being start sold slow. on not being sold on uh, the quarterback necessarily. I'm. I like the Bears' offense, and even if they start slow, it's not really going to hurt they, Miller's they stock could too quote, much. They could start slow to the point where it's they're just slow. Their offense is learning for a year, you yeah. know. And and I and that point, you can buy Anthony Miller halfway through the season for as cheap or cheaper than he's going right now. That's all. That's all my thing. Yeah, know, but he's still going to be more expensive than Balage if Balage doesn't see the field. True. That's but there's it's just an if factor, right? It's you know, if. Anthony Miller's going to see the field, and if he's so but, was, uh, but if he, all right, if he so Corey but Coleman's got, week one. But you got but you got Tariq Cohen, the potential maybe next to Tyreek Hill, we're all hoping. You got uh Allen Robinson, who's over there gonna get a, you know, number one targets. They paid him a bunch of money to come over there, not gonna not throw in the ball. You bring in Trey Burton, he's gonna get targets. And it's not like you only run out there with two or three wide receivers all I'm saying that Anthony Miller's not gonna come out there and get a hundred targets year one. It's just not gonna happen. He's not gonna most, catch sixty five, seventy balls. Most likely he's not gonna see a hundred plus targets. But there is there always is a chance that he could 
be his guy underneath he, and be his safety okay. valve. And he's awesome in the red zone, so he doesn't have to catch a ton of balls. And he could score some touchdowns in this offense with that, that should be wide open because there's a lot of options to go to and sure. a lot of weapons to defend. Oh, I mean, and we just, again, he's going to be on the field week in, week out. Chances are Balazs is not. I mean, I, I mean, I hope he does well. Like my, our, you know, my boy Tyler Boyd caught fifty five as a rookie. I mean, yeah. you don't, you, and that was just, just under the radar fifty five. You know, he could have an under the radar fifty five catches. But I, so now we go to Michael Gallup. I don't personally want anything to do with the passing game for the for the Cowboys. All I want is no. He I'm can mostly, all day I'm long. mostly with you there. I like the player Michael Gallup a lot. And I think he, he's he's could be a great possession receiver, a great number two. I don't think he's a lead dog. I think I, I don't mind taking a shot. We're also talking about dynasty here, and we can't just be getting caught up and looking in one year. Very here. true, very true. But I mean, in one, but Dak's not going anywhere, and Dak's not a prolific passer, and that type of transformation is not coming in in very small increments from him. I mean, it's it's going to be coming in small increments. It's not going to be an overnight. Oh God. Dak turned into Carson Wentz. That right. ain't happening. But and and Dak's an open two kind of guy. There's he, Dak. Dak spreads it around very well and is with his legs and with what Ezekiel Elliott does sure. for him. He doesn't have to force. Sure, obviously. but there's 132 targets void with Dez. There's 87 targets void with Witten and there's 23 targets void with Brandon Butler. That's a solid. So there's amount. a bunch there's of ta- targets. I, did, I already early. said target volume, Jason. I already said tar- you know Michael Gallup. But you just don't know who target it's volume. Be. Sure. I, I'm. I'm just. I don't really. I'm with you though. I'm not. For the I'm, most part, I'm not taking Gallup. I'm here. not I'm, head over Anthony heels. Anthony Miller over Gallup for me. Me too. I'm not head over heels over Gallup's situation in in Cowboy. Target situ- Target volume is there. Don't know if it's going to him or not. And what he could still he could be on the field every snap doesn't necessarily translate to targets for him. He could be get, if you line him up as a number one and he gets number one cornerback. Dak's not throwing him the ball. Dak's smart. He'd be throwing it to Switzer and whatever couple tight ends Switzer's they're using. On the Raiders. Uh, well, I meant yeah, Beasley. you're right. I was thinking Beasley. Yeah, Switzer, big good pickup for the Raiders. So anyway, there's two wide receivers that I'm just not taking over. Bel- I'm still taking the home run cut on Belage and it's not and. No, not one thing of that is meant to be a slight on those wide receivers. I would love to see him play good ball. The thing about that is I'm going to get catches somewhere else or I can trade my second round pick next year for Larry, Larry Fitzgerald or you know what I mean? Like I, I can I can pick up a decent startable wide receiver anytime I need it. Yeah, well, I, can't I can, pick, I can up, pick up a bench riding rookie running back probably whenever I want during the <laughs> season, though. Can you? Uh, I don't. I think so. If you if in the middle of the season, if Balaj wasn't doing anything and you wanted to give somebody a second, you could probably pick him up. Yeah, maybe. You're not Especially probably not getting Anthony Miller though. Nah, maybe. But if somebody gets hurt and Kalen Balaj is in there playing ball, sure, just, somebody's going to give him give you two ones for him. That's if, just the way it if, works. If Anthony Miller is Trubisky's boy and he does is about to see. 120 targets and it looks like this is about to be a fun time for a lot of years somebody might give you two ones for anthony miller yeah it could happen if if was and i I, listen i'm i'm with you i like i'm all about taking the running backs early and often and i I, i'm they're a lot harder to come by and when they hit they hit and it's great and then they're hard to get off pry somebody's hands from i'm just i'm just playing a little devil's advocate and you should because there's a lot of people that's going to listen to this and be like ah that's stupid i wouldn't do that and and that's fine i get it that's just that's how i want to play it i'm taking i'm taking the home run cut on that two one pick at at the running back there that is a 230 pound man that is if nothing else he might have been the best pass catching running back in the draft and sure there's a couple of different guys that are up there neck and neck with him but saquon barkley well, Saquon doesn't count. He's uh, he's not even in this conversation. Royce Freeman caught more balls than the, Kalen Balaj did. The Ooh. wide receiver <laughs> position is just backfillable. Kalen Balaj just didn't really play much until this past year. That's why. Well, that was the 44 catches was in his junior well, season. Junior senior. It was weird usage this year, yeah. really, is what happened with Kalen Balaj. I don't really know what was going on there. Which is Because he does an effort. They don't trust him. Which is also a strange thing, that with the weird usage with him. So yeah, just try to make it. I try. We all try to make excuses for him in our, our breakdowns. And then like now I'm just like, I don't know if I should have made all those excuses. I'm ready to just I, I can't take either of those two. I got to take the running back wide receivers here. I, I'm, I'm, I understand the whole let's do this running back thing. Let's pound it to the ground and I'll take the eight with you guys off the rip. Maybe I'll squeeze GJ more somewhere in there. But after that, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm with you for up. the most part. I'm probably not taking Balazs here. 
I'm probably taking Anthony Miller here and or Gasecki. If if you want to talk about home run cuts, I think that's a great home run cut. I like to sit both on your bench as picks. well. He could sit on your bench for as long as as Balaj sits on your bench easily. And if the, if the tight end hits, you know they're also very valuable. Agree. As soon as and this is this is this league particular that we're you know mock drafting for is not a tight end premium right. league, but no premium. I still can't blame you if you want to take Giuseppe basically anywhere you want. Yeah, no, for it. especially in the second round. Yeah, agree with all that. And here's the biggest thing that I didn't mention I should have before we broke into that 30 minutes worth of Kalen Balazs talk at 2-1. This is, <laughs> well, there, we're doing this draft. We're doing this mock draft modeled off of a home league, and we're just going with the flow on the picks as the players come up that we would like to pick, and we couldn't trade back. So I'm not... T- Please don't. Yeah, we're anybody, trying to do the draft. We're not right. We're to just doing the draft. Talk so, about trades. Right. 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 We're trying to mock mock draft something. So like, please don't anybody out there think that I would say you got to take you know uh, you know push push but Kalen Balage on you at two one. I did take Kalen Balage in a draft at two three, and I took him in a draft at two five. I've seen him get taken at two ten. You know, just have your eyes open and your head on the swivel in the middle early second round and figuring out where you're going to go. But you would have tried to trade back here if. Absolutely, and I and I, you know, if you've been listening to us more than thirty We're minutes, if you've ever to listened to back. us before, yeah, we it's all about trade up or trade back, or this is all. I love trading, yeah. and anytime you get a a check a, a minute in a draft to do so, I'm all for it. If you don't want to take the player that you have all, to take, all through the first round after pick one, we were talking about your trade backs and all that kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah, listen to the after show and last what week you about do and all that kind of stuff. So some trade back. Don't just like wanted it. to throw that out there just before you stop listening to us and be like that big co's an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> 